I know this is the thing that people are just gonna freak out about. Last time I mentioned it on the channel, people freaked out, but you guys are, you're wrong. This is better. All right, in yesterday's video, I asked you guys if you wanted to see a setup video for my new MacBook Pro, and a bunch of you said yes, so that's what we're doing today. Today was gonna be a quick tip Tuesday, but on Wednesday, and instead it's gonna be many tips to set up your MacBook Pro. The idea being that I'm gonna go through like all the preferences that I change, all the things that I actually do to the computer, and hopefully along the way, you will pick something up. Ideally, you'll pick many things up, but, but even if you just learn one new thing about maybe a setting or something on the computer, how I use this computer, maybe some of the programs that I use, Hopefully that's helpful for you. And since there was no quick tip this week, it was just this video, which is many tips. Uh, today's video is still sponsored by Epidemic Sound, the leader in YouTube music licensing. And if you are making videos for the internet, someone that you should know about. You should be using Epidemic Sound if you're making content for the internet. For multiple reasons, but mainly because they have a huge library, over 35,000 music tracks, 90,000 sound effects, but really the biggest thing is that it's a low monthly subscription, 15 bucks, and you get access to all of it, totally unlimited, download all you want, make videos for your channel, and it's all included. Back in the day when we used to make videos, we would license individual tracks for like 75 or $100, per track and now now I could put 10 songs in one video and I'd pay the same amount. They're amazing. If you haven't heard about them already, first link in the description, one month free trial, go in there, download a bunch of music, make videos, put it on your channel, all free during that trial period. And then after that, it's super cheap. Yeah, they're great. If you don't know about them, definitely check them out. Okay, the, the very first two things that I do to my computer are controversial, but only because people are so precious about their computers and I am looking for form over function. Strike that, reverse it. This way, please. The very first thing I do is I put a piece of Velcro on the back of my lap. This, this spot right here, right up here, I want this hard drive to be able to live there, Velcroed, and then I can just plug this right into the side right there. So, oh geez. So we got a piece of Velcro here. I put the soft side of the Velcro on my laptop. I need about that much. It's not an exact science. Just a, a little piece of Velcro. Oh geez, come on. We'll line it up so, you know, it's semi-centered. Bingo, bango. I have a spot where my external hard drive, we talked about this in the last video, four terabyte external hard drive just goes shigink right there. Got two terabytes internal. I can plug it in on the side. And now if I'm at like a coffee shop or I'm on an airplane, my external hard drive is now connected to my laptop. So when I pick this thing up, I don't have to like grab an external hard drive and like try to carry them together or anything. They're all just, it's just together. Also, a bunch of you asked about this external hard drive, this four terabyte external hard drive. I'm gonna I'm gonna link to a video up there. I didn't think of this idea. Cody Wanner, Wainer, Cody. Mm, shoot, which one is it? Cody Wainer? Wanner sounds right. Cody Wanner, he made a video all about it. I just followed the steps in his video. I bought the things off Amazon. You put it together. It's actually like an internal SSD card that you put inside this housing and you build your own way cheaper, super fast. It's amazing. So a massive thank you to Cody and just check his channel out. In general, his channel is super dope. Okay, second thing I do to my computers and same thing, a lot of people give me crap about this, but it makes it more useful in my everyday use and that's what matters. Uh, grab yourself a Sharpie and then we're gonna fill up all the ports. So I'm gonna grab the HDMI cable on this side, grab a USB-C cable, plug that in, grab an SD card, plug that in. And then I'm actually gonna draw lines on top of my computer. Now the thing is, this obviously isn't the most pretty looking thing because, you know, like right now, it's so nice and beautiful. But if I am looking at my laptop and I wanna plug something into the side, it's impossible to just hit it. You've gotta like look over, plug it in and then and then you anyways i want to be able to just look down know where the ports are and plug it in so all i do is i plug everything in and then i just draw lines and this isn't super exact but now i know like the hdmi thing is there usb is right there and my sd card goes right there and then i flip to the other side and i do the same thing Think and same thing, I'm gonna just draw lines 
on my laptop. Okay, and that is it. So right now, I now have lines on top of my laptop. When I look down, I can just look down. I know my MagSafe goes there. If I wanted to plug my headphones in, I look down and I just go bink. I can see the, po I've labeled the ports. Old Windows computers always had labels on the top so you could just see from the top. And Mac wants it to look pretty. I get that. It does look really pretty without lines scribbled on it but it's way more useful with lines. See, that doesn't look so bad. All right, let's dive into the actual computer now. And the first thing I do is I hop into system preferences because right away I click on trackpad because the trackpad is almost unusable with how slow it is. I go to point and click and I move the track. I think the tracking speed is normally down here. I move it up to here, the third one from the fastest. I like, I like this cursor whipping around the screen. And I also click on tap to click, which means that instead of actually having to push the trackpad in, I just kind of touch the trackpad and it acts as a click. I think it's all in there. Back here, I jump to general and in general, the first thing I do is I switch the appearance to auto. I, I'm not a huge dark mode fan, but I do at nighttime like the dark mode. I don't like opening my laptop in the middle of the night and it's like, Oh, and it's super, super bright, especially with these new displays. And the other change I do in here is on show scroll bars, I say always. That just makes it so that anything that has a scroll bar on the side, the scroll bar is always there. I don't like having to do that like weird hover my mouse and hope that a scroll bar pops up thing. I just, I want them to be there at all times. Then the next thing I do is go to dock and menu bar. I bring my dock size down just a little bit. I like it a little bit smaller than the magnification. I can bring up just a touch. And I also click automatically hide and show dock. That's an important one. I don't know why that's not on by default, but that makes it so that when my cursor goes down there, the dock pops up, but when it's not down there, it goes away. All right, the next one is a big one. And the last time I made this video, I talked about this and it was exciting to hear how many people did not know about this. It's called hot corners. So you're gonna go into mission control and down here, you're gonna click on hot corners. Here's how I have it set up. The top left corner of my screen is desktop. Bottom left is put display to sleep. Top right is mission control and bottom right is quick note. And basically what this allows me to do now is just kind of fling my cursor to any corner and it does something. But I don't have to click anything. I don't have to use any shortcuts. I just bring my cursor to the top left and it shows me my desktop. So if I've got a bunch of windows open and I've got even if it's like three Safari windows open, the whole screen is covered and I wanna to get to something that's on my desktop, I just fling my mouse up there and there's my desktop, I can get to it. Then if I fling my mouse to the right, I get to see all my windows in mission control. If I put my cursor to the bottom left, the display goes to sleep. And then if I put my cursor to the bottom right, I get that little pop-up corner thing and if I click on it, it pulls up a quick note in notes. All super useful features and and rarely do people know about hot corners. Next thing I do is go down to Bluetooth and say show Bluetooth in menu bar. That just makes it so I can click on this and I can see my Bluetooth items right there. After that, go down to display. And there's two options in here that, that I turn both of them off. Automatically adjust brightness. For some people, that's super useful. For me, editing photos, editing videos, I wanna control my own brightness. I've got that, that physical keyboard back so I can just tap the button to do so, I like that off. And then true tone, I don't want my color shifting during the day. And then after that, I like to go to the sharing tab and I like to rename my computer. I like the name Nacho MacBook Pro because whose MacBook Pro is it? It's Nacho MacBook Pro, <laughs> it's mine. I think it's so funny. And that just changes the name, like when you pop up like for AirDrop or something like that, that's the name that will now pop up. And that is all in system preferences. Now, next up is Finder preferences. First thing I do is I turn on hard disks. That way I can see my hard drive on the desktop here. I also go over to Advanced and I click on Keep Folders on Top in Windows when sorting by name and on Desktop. So really what that does is that now when I open up Finder, if inside of a folder is more folders and files are kind of all jumbled together, it doesn't just list them alphabetically, it puts the folders on top and then the files below it and those are sorted alphabetically and the files are sorted alphabetically. Organization is helpful. Uh, next over to sidebar, I like to make sure that Nacho MacBook Pro is on, hard disks are on. I wanna see all that on the sidebar in my Finder. And the next thing I do is I click on view in Finder and I say show path bar and then view again and show status bar. Okay, and the last thing I do right away is I go into Safari, that's the main web browser that I use on here. I go to Safari, Safari preferences, 
We're gonna go into general here and right here, open safe files after downloading. This is where, you know, when you download a file from Epidemic Sound or any other file that's out there, I download a music file and all of a sudden Apple Music opens up and it starts playing it right away. Or I download a photo and that photo just opens in preview right away. This is, this is where you turn that off. So just unclick that little box right there. And now when you download it, it'll just go to the download folder and it nothing, nothing will happen beyond that. That's one of the ones that I didn't know for years. And I was always so frustrated by that and I hated it. So frustrating. All right, let's get to the apps that I download on here. I've actually made a pretty big shift. I used to use Google Drive for almost everything. Now I switched over to Dropbox. So the very first thing I do when I get a new computer is I download Dropbox. Now the thing I really like about Dropbox is that I can go in here and everything lives in the Dropbox folder on my computer. So everything on this computer totally backed up at all times. I could throw this computer in a lake, go buy another one. I would download Dropbox, I would download iCloud and everything would pretty much be back to where it was, file-wise. Those two things back up everything on this computer at all times. So all of my main folders that I'm using, my, my YouTube channel, my photography business, all those folders live within that Dropbox folder. And the really clever thing within Dropbox is that they have something called Smart Sync. So any folder or file that's in my Dropbox, I can view it from here. I can see it within Finder, but they don't have to live on my computer. So I don't have to have all the terabytes that I have in Dropbox on my computer. They live in Dropbox. And when I want to access them, I download my computer. And then again, after that, everything else is backed up via iCloud pretty much. So all my photos, all my videos, my contacts, my calendar, all that stuff backed up via iCloud. Because I also made a pretty big shift in, I stopped using Evernote and I switched just to Apple Notes. The ecosystem of Apple kinda, kinda reeled me back in from Evernote. I moved back to Apple Notes. And then also I left the to-do list app that I was using and I just went back to Reminders because I really like being able to just pull up Siri on my phone and tell her to remind me of something later. It dumps to that list. It's kinda like my brain dump list. And then I can go in there and I can organize all the, the reminder. Anyways, it's so much better just being in the ecosystem. Definitely one of those things where ecosystem wins out over potentially a better product. Like, I think Evernote's probably a better product than Apple Notes, but Apple Notes is so integrated into all my devices that it makes more sense for me to use. Okay, next up is Adobe Creative Suite. I download the Creative Cloud Suite. And then from here, I can download all of my apps really easily in there. This is something where I am talking about moving to Final Cut Pro. I bought Final Cut Pro because I'm for sure going to move to Final Cut Pro for at least a little while and like try it out. But one thing that is so nice about the whole Creative Cloud membership is just being able to have your apps right here. I can download them all. I can make sure they're always up to date. It, it is pretty nice. Then after that, the next app that I download is Photo Mechanic. This is where I do all of my file ingest and all my calling. So when I come home from a wedding, I've got I've got four to 5,000 images from me and my second shooter. I am gonna bring them in to my computer through Photo Mechanic, but then I'm also gonna call them through Photo Mechanic because it's super, super quick to just go ta 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 three star, ta 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 one star, three ta 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 five star. The next app that I download is, well, it's being used right now. It's called screen flick and it's what I use to record my screen for all these videos. Anytime I'm making a video for you guys and you see my screen is being recorded, it's with an app called screen flick. Uh, then after that, I just download some like basic stuff. Like I download Spotify because there's some podcasts I like to listen to. I download the Insta360 Studio app because I really like using that app to edit and export large files like on the go to. I like to just plug the go to in here, dump them on here and then be able to just batch export them in nine by 16 or batch export in 16 by nine. Super, super Super useful, I like that app. I also grab the Rode Central app because I use the Rode Wireless Goes for a ton of these videos. And I go in there and that's how I adjust settings on those wireless goes. And then the last app that I download is Chrome. And the reason I download Chrome is almost exclusively for YouTube. I like to use the TubeBuddy extension. If you guys aren't using this, if you have a YouTube channel and you're not using TubeBuddy, you should be. But when you have TubeBuddy open, you get all this data on the side of your screen and it's only available in Chrome. It's not available for Safari, which bums me out. So I download Chrome only for YouTube. And I barely even watch YouTube within Chrome. I almost always watch YouTube videos on Safari because it runs faster, it uses less memory, it uses less power. But then when I wanna see analytics, I click over to Chrome just for that reason. <laughs> And then after I have all of these apps on my computer, the next thing I do is I bring all the apps that I just downloaded 
into my dock. Those are all the apps that I use most, and then I get rid of all the apps that, that I don't really use very often, but that kind of come standard in the dock. All right, got that done, and now these are the apps that, that kind of made the cut. These are the apps that stay in the dock. Safari, messages, photos, calendar, reminders, notes, music, bridge, photo mechanic, Lightroom CC, which is the, the cloud version of Lightroom, and then the one that I use most, which is Lightroom Classic, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, After Effects, now, now Final Cut Pro, because I'm, again, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I might make this video in Final Cut. I don't think I'm ready for that. But I'll make a video very soon in Final Cut Pro. And then System Preferences. All these things stay on my dock. A little more tidy, but I got rid of all those other default ones. That's it. That's all that I do to my computer. Now it's, it's ready for me to do work. It's ready for me to edit photos, to edit videos, and just do life in general. If you have anything that I'm not doing though, put it in the comments below. I wanna hear about things that you guys do that I don't do because I love learning new things, especially about computers that I've used for years. And I learn new things all the time. I remember, I remember back in the day, like this was a long time ago, but I've been using Macs for like two years at the time. And then I learned that Apple tab would cycle through the apps that you had open on your screen. And it broke my brain at the time that I'd been using this computer for two years without knowing that. So if you have one of those things, for sure, put it down below. And uh, yeah, thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. Appreciate you guys watching. And I will see you soon. Bye.